Doomsday. Armageddon. The end of days. Is the Earth speeding towards a cataclysmic end? It is inevitable for the human race to absolutely cease to exist. The threat is an all-time high. Prophecies and ancient texts point to an end of mankind's existence on Earth. I mean, here's a civilization that's religiously keeping track of the passage of time, and suddenly they come to a point where time stops. With the sudden increase of natural disasters and political unrest, could this just be planetary evolution? The Earth always finds a way to set things back to zero. If we are headed toward an apocalypse that our government knows about, why haven't they warned us? The government's known about it all along, and why has nobody told us? Because they don't expect us to live through it. And what can you do to save yourself? We are going to do anything to survive. It's just a matter of what level will we go to. Tonight, you'll find out. What is the history you were taught in school? was all a lie. Is our government controlled by a secret society? Welcome to the world of conspiracy, where cover-ups, secrets, and hidden agendas all trace back to a single source. We're about to unseal the secret files the government doesn't want you to know about. This is Unsealed, Conspiracy Files. Lake Vostok, Antarctica. Right now, Russian scientists are completing a two-decade drilling operation to reach this subglacial lake. They've drilled through two miles of solid ice to reach a body of water that has remained untouched by light and surface air for more than 20 million years. The problem with such a scientific operation is that we have no idea what they're going to find, and neither do they. Do these scientists realize what could happen if something dark is unleashed from the lake's chasm? What could be preserved under this ice cap that they're releasing to our air? What if it is a virus or bacteria? They're not thinking about the end game. And we as the human race have to go on the blind faith that they are considering our future when they push these boundaries. They're opening up potentially a Pandora's box that could take us all out. The possibilities for a primitive toxin are limitless. A virus unknown to mankind could spread with no antibodies and no cure. You know, you punch through the ice, the scientists are excited, they extract this life form, they take it to some kind of lab to study it, the thing escapes, the next thing you know, we're all wiped out. There has to be a hidden agenda that's forcing this drilling to take place. If they open the ice and something is down there, it could be the end of mankind. They're not gonna know until they break the ice. And when they do, there's nothing we can do. For thousands of years, prophecies of the end of time have fascinated cultures around the world. And though many of these prophecies have different theories on how the end will come, they all agree on one important fact. Our doomsday is inevitable. Man has always been intrigued by religious texts that explain Armageddon or revelations that there's going to be a return of a judgment day. There are many cultures that documented their theories on doomsday. One in particular stands out from the rest, the Maya civilization. What is it about the Mayan calendar? that has made so many people think we're facing the end of days. I mean, here's a, a civilization that's religiously keeping track of the passage of time, and suddenly they come to a point where time stops. But the Maya are not alone in their belief that the end of times is impending. In the 16th century, Michel de Nostradame became famous worldwide for his book, The Prophecies. In Quatrain 1146, Nostradamus wrote, it will rain blood, famine, war, and disease. In the sky will be seen a fire dragging a tail of sparks. <laughs> 
That particular passage is absolutely interpreted and reinterpreted as the end of days. For Nostradamus, that literally is a description of Armageddon. Some scholars believe that Nostradamus depicts the end of the world coming from a ball of fire with sparks behind it. And a lot of people think that's a comet or an asteroid, but could it be a rocket? Could it be a missile? If these visions of doomsday are true, what conspiracy is hiding the coming end of days? Why are we not being told? If the world is coming to its end, we haven't done anything to prepare for it. World governments ignored it entirely, and we aren't taking it seriously. Is it possible the powers ruling our society aren't simply ignoring the threat, but covering it up? A manufactured doomsday, one that we cause, is just as plausible as some type of natural event or natural reaction that we can't control. And if they are, then why? Coming up next, from destructive tools of war to super advanced technology, discover the secret weapons your government doesn't want you to know about until it's too late. Unsealed Conspiracy Files. Doomsday. With so much warning from ancient cultures and modern scientific research, is it possible that our governments know something we don't? With nature revolting against us and societies collapsing all around us, we are a world on the brink of destruction. If the government's known about a doomsday scenario, why haven't they told us? Could they be hiding the true nature of the apocalypse because it will come from their own design? As technology and science advances, it makes doomsday all that much more plausible and all that much more real. And so when you start playing with fire like that, it, it's gonna burn eventually. For decades, we have feared annihilation by nuclear warfare. But our true end could come in the form of much more insidious weaponry. Unsealed case file, the bioterror conspiracy. When you deal with nuclear technology, obviously that is destruction on the ultimate level. But there's something scarier within the arsenal of the US government and the US military. They've created biological and chemical weapons. If they created something that they cannot control, that could spread like wildfire throughout our society and we could meet our doomsday head on. Today, scientists are manufacturing new synthetic biological agents that could spread and mark the beginning of the end to the world as we know it. Some theorize that that scenario did play true. In the 1960s and 70s, the government requested funding to create a biological agent that humans had not acquired an immunity for. The conspiracy says they created a virus that escaped their labs, and what we now know as the HIV virus appeared shortly thereafter. What if AIDS was created by our military, or what if they create something that's even more violent and harsher than AIDS? There are thousands of pages within the files of the military and the government that show that they are and have created biological agents that they're going to use against enemies. But what's scary is what they might use in combat probably pales in comparison to what they're researching in the lab. Bovine, spongiform, encephalopathy, or mad cow disease. A violent brain infection spread through cannibalism. Experts believe that a biological weapon could be created by attaching an infected protein with effects similar to mad cow disease to a common virus. Released into the public, the virus could spread quickly with the infection attacking the frontal lobes of its hosts, instantly eliminating parts of the brain responsible for morality and inhibition and causing dementia, jerking muscles, and eventually death. Or, in another word, zombies. And if you think it's just science fiction, think again. Russia's Minister of Defense has admitted that they are developing psychotronic weapons. Weapons that use electromagnetic fields and forces to influence the human brain. 
If Gary were to deploy psychotronic weapons, ultimately you would create an army of zombies. They don't have to think, have morality, regret what they do, because those weapons can turn off that part of your brain and turn on that violent anger, rage part that would help them win a battle. As scary as that sounds, it's reality when it comes to psychotronic weapons. How much further can we push the boundaries of science? What about controlling the planet itself? We've always wanted to control our environment, control the weather. And if the government has found a way to do this finally, then why not use it to their advantage? Why not use it as a weapon? Imagine that the government can take a huge array of sensors and antennas and make a tornado. That's scary to me. That's frightening. There are documents in the United States military files that prove beyond any doubt they are manipulating weather. I think that science is clearly ignoring what they are doing to our planet. What if you create that chain reaction that doesn't stop? But governments are not the only organizations that could cause a global disaster. Private businesses have recently developed plans to pull asteroids into the orbit of Earth's moon for the mining of their mineral resources. With notable investors such as filmmaker James Cameron and Google CEO Larry Page on the project, the story almost seems like a Hollywood plotline. While these early attempts may prove lucrative, they could eventually open doors for future endeavors with less credibility and experience. And a single error is all it would take. Redirecting an asteroid to be closer to the Earth? One miscalculation and that asteroid's gonna crash right into our planet. An asteroid a mere 300 meters in diameter could hit Earth with nearly 60,000 times the force of an atomic bomb. Enough to destroy an area the size of France. The resulting ash cloud would cover the Earth, killing all crops and animals, turning the rain to acid. These are final days in which the living would envy the dead. This example of corporate greed could put Earth on its path to extinction. But will doomsday truly mean the end of mankind? It could be our greatest hour as a race, a chance to show our resilience, but only if we live through it. Coming up next, the government has a plan for the apocalypse, but are you part of it? And what don't you know that could be the one secret essential to survival? Unsealed Conspiracy Files. According to the ancients, each day brings us closer to the end. And yet the public remains in the dark while governments and corporations may hold the answers. Rising tensions between world leaders, decade-long wars, advances in bioweaponry, and mankind's attempts to control nature all fuel the belief in a looming worldwide destruction. The harsh reality is that doomsday is coming. We try and put a timestamp on it, but the human race will absolutely cease to exist on the planet Earth. It's just a matter of when. If doomsday is imminent, why haven't we been told to prepare? Of course the government's not telling us to prepare. Even if they knew of an impending doomsday, why would they tell us? It would be mass hysteria. They would be rioting the streets. It'd be total anarchy. And the best way they can maintain control is to keep us in the dark until it's too late. But there may still be a chance for survival. There is proof that our governments have plans in place in the event of an attack or global devastation. The question is, are we part of that plan? But when you kind of sift through the puzzle pieces and put this document with this document, it really seems that they only care about themselves and the continuity of government. The general public could be left to fend for themselves. Unsealed case file, Project Greek Island, White Sulphur Springs, West Virginia, 1959. 
Project Greek Island is underway in this small West Virginia town, taking place under the luxurious four-star Greenbrier Hotel. In a shroud of secrecy, it is labeled as a hotel renovation. Greenbrier was a fascinating facility because it was built underneath an existing hotel. Just a train ride out of Washington, D.C. for the express purpose of housing the Congress in the event of a nuclear war. When you're there, you're seeing these huge doors that are, you know, resistant to an atomic blast. Kitchen facilities, water facilities, oxygen cleansing facilities, all kinds of things. This is the kind of facility where the wealthy and elite are going to sit and watch the world burn while we burn with it. Greenbrier is just one example of an underground facility meant to house the government so it still functions. But there are other facilities besides Greenbrier. London, England, Moscow, Russia, Washington, D.C., and Pine Gap, Australia are just some of the rumored locations of these underground safe houses. But what about the rest of us? So-called doomsday preppers have recently made headlines as they stockpile supplies for the apocalypse. While these materials could be essential, other vital information might prove the most crucial to our survival. Everyone knows about food, water, ammunition, but I think the most important thing is to get out of the danger zones, those areas that you have zero chance of survival. Danger zones can include large cities, areas that are highly populated, areas with little to no game to survive off of, or any barren, desolate areas. So if you're in one of these areas, you need to get out now. If this conspiracy is true, then we are alone to save ourselves. Can we accomplish such a feat? And we're not just gonna cease to exist. It might be the beginning of the end, but it's not gonna be the end yet. We are going to do anything to survive. It's just a matter of what level will we go to. But will the masses be forsaken? Is there more to the safety of the wealthy and elite than just survival? What is their ultimate goal? And why aren't they trying harder to save the people of our country? When we return, we will uncover the truth behind the secret future plan and get a glimpse of a world you aren't meant to be a part of. Unsealed. Conspiracy Files. Doomsday. Few may survive, but top secret documents show the government has already made plans to protect the elite. This conspiracy has been sitting right under our nose. This 1% of the population that controls everything, have the means, have the facilities, can easily withstand an apocalypse on this planet. If the conspiracy theories are true, we will be the last to know. We are going to do anything to survive. It seems like tensions are at an all-time high. The threat of a nuclear or biological threat is an all-time high. We've never had this much tension on the planet, arguably, ever. It is only a matter of time. So ask yourself, are you ready for doomsday?